When it comes to your data, Fry has you covered with its state-of-the-art, fully redundant data center. Let us show you around our facility, located in Fort Collins, Colorado. Security at our data center starts at the door. Every entrance has a steel door and visitors are required to have a proximity badge. After the first door closes, you enter a man trap that will prevent a second door from opening until your identity has been verified using a retinal scanner. In order to enter the data center, your biometric data must be in Fry's system. For clients that require additional optional layers of security, we enroll them in our fingerprint identification system, allowing clients to open their server rack with biometric data locks instead of a unique key. Now, visitors find themselves next to our 24-7, 365 Network Operations Center. From here, we manage every aspect of our network, including internal and portions of customer infrastructure. We monitor temperatures and on-site security, as well as every detail happening within our system, down to how much power a single fan is using. We often know if our customers' systems are experiencing difficulties before they do. Fry builds, deploys, and maintains all of its security systems in-house. This ensures we don't have to call in external contractors that would constitute a security risk. Around the corner, past another layer of security, is the data center. The first thing visitors see after entering the data center is a server module, which contains the servers we host for clients. Cool air is necessary to keep any system online, so fans pull cool air from the room into the module and trap the used hot air into a containment area, which is called hot aisle containment. From there, the hot air is pulled from the containment area through the cooling system and circulated back into the room. The in-row cooling units move air up and down the rows on demand as heat output from customer racks changes. If anything goes wrong, with the module overheating or a fire, thermal sensors release panels from the top of the module so that the hot air can escape and fire suppressant can get in to neutralize the fire. In case of a fire, we don't use water for obvious reasons. Instead, we use an Ecaro 25 dry agent system. The gas chokes out any flames that are detected, and it's safe to use while humans are present. Plus, it won't damage any equipment. At the end of a module, we have a power distribution unit that takes in the power for the modules and distributes it to the server rack. We can install multiple electric circuits to each customer cabinet and can supply anything from 120 volts with a 20 amp circuit up to 208 volts with a 60 amp circuit. In 2016, we'll start offering DC power. All racks have A and B power for full redundancy. A control panel on the PDU allows us to monitor every single electric circuit going through the unit, basically anything that uses power in the module. On the back wall of the room, there are what we call torpedo tubes. If Fry were to experience anything that would cause our existing cooling systems to catastrophically fail, we could open these tubes, pull up a semi-trailer with air conditioning units, and run cooling hoses into the room. Across the room, you'll see one of our generator controllers for our three on-site generators. This controller detects if the data center loses power and turns on the generator. Two of our generators are diesel-powered and one by natural gas. It takes about seven minutes for the generators to start up, warm up, perform self-tests, and transfer power. In order to cover this transition, Fry uses an uninterruptible power supply, which provides battery backup for roughly 105 minutes. The UPS also conditions power from the city. All power coming into the data center flows through this battery backup, providing a stable supply of power to the modules that we saw earlier. Like everything else in Fry's data center, the power supply is redundant to keep clients online at all times. Further down on the same wall, you'll see a second generator as well as a second UPS. Fry has two different electrical utility feeds for the building in two different locations to maintain power in case one of those lines becomes damaged. Remember the in-row cooling systems we mentioned earlier? These pipes pull that cool air in, send it through the cooling system where the coolant flows, and sends it outside to our outdoor chiller units where it cools the air and distributes it back into the room. We have three outdoor units, so if one were to fail, we have another one to pick up the load. 
A fourth unit lacks a compressor. When it's 40 degrees outside, we use outside air to cool the temperature in the data center, eliminating the need for a compressor. This is called a free air unit. When it comes to connectivity, Fry has multiple upstream carriers that keep the data center connected to the internet. We have full 10 gigabit capability throughout our entire network in primary carriers, Comcast and Level 3, as well as other carriers, CenturyLink, Zio, and MHO. These are fully redundant and run simultaneously, so if one carrier goes down, the other carriers pick up the load. In older data centers, the floor would be raised with all the infrastructure running underneath. To conduct maintenance, floor panels must be removed. All the wires in Fry's data center run overhead because it's much easier to install and maintain our infrastructure. When it comes to your data, Fry has one mission, to connect, serve, and protect. Our state-of-the-art data center helps us do just that.